you know, when we were talking about teams that you could be bullish on, what about on the flip side, you and I talking about teams you just don't like the direction they're going in? I guess an easy one to pick would be Arizona, where I don't know what they're going to look like next year. So I have no idea. Well, see, the thing with Arizona is you already know it's going to look bad when the season starts because Kyler Murray is not going to be back in time from his ACL surgery. So you're already starting the season without Kyler Murray. So in, in a way, I'm kind of like, I'm not really putting a lot of onus of them to to be a disappointment because the disappointment's going to start right away. Um, if there's a team that I would kind of look out for a bit of disappointment would be anybody in the NFC South, <laughs> right? Like, I don't care what they tell you, what they're trying to dream up. It is going to, it is literally going to be the jobber wrestler division of all of football. Take your pick. Tampa's coming. No Brady. Guess what? Baker Mayfield, it doesn't really worry us. So it, of all the teams there, you say, okay, well, maybe what the Panthers are going to do, but let's just call it, we don't really believe there's a generational quarterback talent coming out a la Peyton Manning or Deshaun Watson that we saw come out. Or even no one even saw Patrick Mahomes as a generational talent coming out of college. So I don't see where the Panthers have any type of thing. Atlanta, I mean, my goodness, did Mariota just go ahead and take his sick days and not have to take sick days? You know what I mean? Like, you know, yeah. like these are not vacation days. You really have to be sick. He's like, well, like, I'm just going to use my personal days and sick days, and I'm just going to be <laughs> off every day from the Monday after Thanksgiving through Christmas Eve. You know, like you don't have that much vacation, and you're not that sick. So that's well, a franchise that you don't know what they're doing, and the same thing with the Saints. It, you, they don't. They, what are they doing? Yeah, and and so you, you brought it up because the the three divisions that you have to look at obviously are the AFC South, NFC North, NFC South. Those three mm -hmm. divisions outside of Jacksonville is the one team I'll take out. Everything else is a, and I don't mean this from a playoff standpoint, a bit of a wild card. Like I think yep. people would like Detroit and think Detroit can win that division, but would you be shocked if the Vikings won? No. Would you right. like? Um, yeah, I, I'm not even going to put anything on the Bears yet, but Fields played great last year. They've made it some. They've made some nice additions, and depending on what they do in the draft, I'm not saying it puts them over the top, but I'm not putting the Lions at the forefront and saying that they're a world beater yet, just because they just barely missed the playoffs and they're in a bad division. I do think they make the playoffs this year, but but when I look at those divisions, that that's kind of where you could say, yeah, I could see a team getting hot and stealing it. Like if Carolina gets the right guy, that's a big if, and he plays well his rookie year. Is that a team that could win that division and turn the corner? Sure, because the division's weak. But yeah. I don't I don't expect that to happen. You know, so that's the hard part that's right crazy. now about betting some of these futures is that if I'm betting a future, I'm trying to find either uh, a, a great number, you know, some some right. value that I, I I think is is a it's a good chance to sprinkle on it now. There's yep. nothing really for me as far as future bets in the NFL that I'm willing to jump all over. I have my leans, but I'm probably still gonna wait till after the draft because God forbid something happened. Um, training camp, something happened. I don't like a team's draft or or uh, some goofy trade happens that we're not expecting. Uh, then right. that can obviously change the entire outcome. So I don't like um, I don't like a wrench being thrown in my plans. If some, so I'd rather bet it when I'm I feel more certain that the roster is kind of set. But that's just me. Other guys like to get into the market early. I don't know if that's uh, how you like to bet as well. Well, the, well, you mentioned the NFC North. This is the great time I think to jump on the Vikings to win that division at three to one, right? Because mm -hmm. like you said, most teams are a quarterback away where the Vikings are only a cornerback away, right? Because they were 31st in pass defense. And they were great, they're pretty decent against the run. So if they can get someone who has the ability to kind of either shut down one side of the field or get a couple of guys who are able to minimize, let's just say they go from 31st to 16th, then now you have a team that not only is a playoff team again, but possibly has, they're going to win their division. So there's your 300 plus, you know, your three to one. But at the same time, now you have a team that could be uh, on the upset alert once they'll continue to provide you value as the season goes along because nobody sees value in them now and they have the cheapest route to fix their problem where these other teams, as we mentioned in the AFC South, pretty much they all need quarterbacks. Even Tennessee probably needs a quarterback. In the NFC South, outside of Derek Carr being legit the quarterback, everybody else there is a question mark. So even if you look at even the NFC West, where you're like, okay, Seattle was kind of a feel-good story, but with Arizona and with the Rams on a rebound, and you don't know if Seattle could keep up, there's another area where there's just going to be a lot of kind of yuck, 